welcome to the daily dose of waffling. Actually, let's follow it right there. Welcome to the daily dose of waffling and howling with Project Dog Waffle. <laughs> let's have some fun here. Uh, actually, before we get started having fun, that is, we need to see how to use this program. And one thing that's new in PD Howler is the uh, floating tool panel uh, in this layout. You can now go to the uh, layout uh, the window menu and find layout. There's a sidebar left and right. We've had that in PD Pro 5 already So you can put that on the left side if you like you can still click here to close it click here to reopen it um, I'm gonna stick it back to the right side the Sidebar on the right, but there is a tool panel and that is a new layout option too So when you go to the layout you see two columns toolbar and maybe you're more familiar with that one. That works great on netbooks if you have a very small screen, low resolution. But if you do have more than about 700 or 800 pixels vertically, you can certainly go to the single column toolbar and you may find this a little bit more uh, familiar, uh, looking like the uh, digital painting programs you may already have, maybe a photo editing or illustration program with a single tool panel. So there's some, some cool stuff to explore there. Now before we do that I want you to explore another item and that's uh, it used to be in the file menu at preferences or prefs. We've moved that in PD Pro 5 actually already and also now in PD Howler. We've had this in the um, settings options here under the window menu. So what that gives you is a couple of things. First of all, if things get locked up or messed up, you change the screen resolution and you can't find your floating windows anymore because they were stored somewhere that's now off screen, you can go and kill the registry keys. That's a good one to remember. Uh, you may need to do that at times if something gets messed up in your system registry. All right, so that's a good way to make sure you kind of recuperate all of the hidden windows that are off screen. Uh, another thing you sh probably should do also is increase the memory options. Um, 32 megabytes of undo memory is just not going to go very far if you have large images or lots of, uh, you know, large animations, big frames. So that's one thing. And then also, I would not only put it up to the max if you have the memory, but also go to uh, specify the temp folder in a place where you can actually use it. Sometimes you have user account control, UAC, um, preventing you from accessing that particular folder or from creating new files in it. So you want to make sure that what it picks here is something that your system will allow you to use. Or you just run it as administrator and you should be able to override the UAC settings in that case. Uh, another option that might be really useful too is uh, you know, to have it start up without asking you for the image uh, size. Initially when you start it up it might ask you, you know, what, what size do you want. Uh, you can certainly pick some of these and you can even add, you can edit this and add your own sizes. If you work a lot in HD you can put some new dimensions here. If you work a lot in texturing you may want to do square tiles, uh, create them, you know, add some additional entries in here. Um, let's see what else. Startup plugins. If you want to um, add a plugin or two that should start up the moment you uh, fire up the program. Uh, for instance, if you need a clock here, you can find there is one or two options for that. Select this clock, and then that way, when you start the program up next time, it will launch this plugin as well automatically for you. That's kind of handy if you have some tools that you use a lot and you want to not waste another second to get them. So um, let's see what else there is. Oh yeah, the interface has a few more options and that's the middle button for panning. Uh, the spline based input gives you a little bit smoother curves if you're drawing, you know, nice uh, smooth uh, uh, brush strokes. And then there is also uh, some additional options for showing the, the bounding box around your custom brushes. So you know what you're about to stamp down or to paint with before you actually click and drag. Uh, there's also inverting the alpha highlight color and we'll explore that. That's one of the new selection options so that you actually see sort of a, a, a pink tinted uh, region that indicates where you don't have your selection. But if you prefer, you can invert it and actually make it so that it actually shows you where it is selected with the pink coloring. Uh, there's also magnetic windows that's enabled by default so that you can have it automatically snap together If you move different windows together, they should be uh, groupable more easily that way All right, let's see. Uh, I think that pretty much uh, sums it up uh, if you want to use it or save it uh, do that and uh, Now let's uh, go to the next module actually that will be tomorrow um, for how to do this particular window. This image that you see right there will do, will go through some of the steps on how to create something like that.